What's up, G Show Land, and welcome to another episode of the G Show Podcast. I am G1, and this is the G1 vs. Z1 show. The first episode of 2024 coming at you in the fourth month of the year. Holy shit, it's been a long time since we've done this. Season premiere, Gam Gams. How the hell are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. We should have we should have done one of these a while back, but it's fine. It's fine. We 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 had stuff to do. We had po- other podcasts to talk about with the other boys. Yeah. Didn't didn't have the 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 means to get one on one until today. And because you, you know, who, who who else in the podcast besides us reads, right? Yeah, I know, right? Bunch of illiterate fucks. That's right. I said it. And if you hear it, come at me, bro. Let me stop. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It's true. And not for nothing, the, the GVK book review was fun. I had such a blast doing that, that we had to do this. Now, <laughs> Mr. I'm such a fast reader, I beat you to the punch this time around. You did. You did. I, I was late to the party on getting the book. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When you said the novel was going to be at your house by Friday, I was like, what the fuck? Really? It's out already? So I went on. I was like, fuck it, I'll order it too. And I saw the Kindle. I was like, well, you know what? I really want to read it right now. So hit that Kindle button, started reading. Two days, I was in, I was done. Honestly, I think that was the second fastest Godzilla book I ever read. The first fastest being Godzilla's Return, Godzilla Returns by Mark Sarazini. Oh, yeah. Way back when. Oh, the Mark Sarazini's. Well, I tell you. You know how expensive those books are nowadays? Oh, my God. You have no idea how happy I am that I have um, uh, Godzilla at the center of the Earth, whatever, Hollow Earth, whatever it was called. Middle of the Earth. Yeah, at, at the Earth's core. That's the one. <laughs> the Earth's core. Thank you. And Godzilla versus the robot monsters. You have no idea how happy I have those. Oh, those are so expensive now. Robot Monsters especially because that shit was hard to find when it dropped. True, true. I think they did. Random House was like, yeah, this ain't making money, but since we already have this, set it out, get it out. But, topic of the day. The GXK novelization. Okay? Now, if y'all been listening, we'll give us a, we'll give a, a quick, not review of the movie, but our feelings, quick feelings of the movie itself. Starting with Gam Gams. Well, I absolutely love the movie. It's it's such a, a triumph of of visual storytelling, along with a fun human cast, and uh, you know the 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 movie itself just completely enamored me with with its imagination, its its plotting, and and the characterization of the monsters. Scar King is my favorite. A uh, villain out of the entire monster verse, not because he's more powerful than Ghidorah, but because he has that personality. He's got that anime villain energy, you know. And uh, it, it, it's it's not as co- conveyed nearly as well in the novelization because you need that visual element. Yeah. But it's it's still really cool, and I, I really enjoyed this book. I first time seeing the movie it was like okay yeah all right they were floating good god almighty i didn't come out hating the movie but i didn't come out loving the movie the second time around i warmed up a bit more i was like all right you know what it is a fun rock you said it you said it perfectly um the the storytelling the visual storytelling is just perfect that's a fact um the bu- I, gotta, I gotta throw budget in here for whatever it was, what, 130 that it supposedly cost? Yeah. I mean, again, this is the second time where we get to see these monsters in broad fucking daylight going at it. I mean, broad fucking daylight. And... Oh, yeah. It's But like the closest great. we get to a true night scene is Godzilla in France and the, the, the yeah. lava cave that the Scar King lives in. That is That is absolutely true. And oh god, that Godzilla in France part was probably my favorite part of the movie because of Pulse. For the love of Christmas, the Pulse. I was like, yes, so much Pulse. But yeah, the, the second viewing, I warmed up to it a lot more than the first viewing. I still got my gripes. And oh boy, does this book make some of those even more gripier? I will, if, if you will. But let's talk about this book. 
Starting off with a mean prologue. This is the second book in a row that had a prologue that we didn't see in the movie. But yeah. thoroughly helps the book, right? Thoroughly helps the story. Oh, yeah. Like, like literally, you see the rampage Scylla goes on. Well, quote-unquote, see. You read it. But you get the context of the rampage around like India and stuff that Scylla goes on and Godzilla tra uh, trailing her but being just a little too late. The same plot as in GXK The Hunted, the comic book uh, but not from the perspective of Bernie but from the perspective of Director Hampton this time from Monarch yes. and Director Hampton is the MVP of this whole book. The whole book. I agree. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, like you, I, I wish like at least half of the characterization of, of Director Hampton in the book was in the movie. 100,000 percent, you know what? Oh God, <laughs> a little off topic, but on the same topic. Maybe they, maybe they casted that person to play that role because she's kind of an unknown, which means TV. True, true. I would not mind that. Especially knowing that there's going to be spinoffs now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would love to see more of Director Hampton in, in Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 2 or spinoff shows or anything like that, really. Absolutely. And then they have... Um, yeah, go ahead. We, we got that. Um, I, I, I loved just the snippet of Godzilla's point of view from the uh, from the beginning of the book. That's the only time we get Godzilla's point of view. Yeah. Every other time we get a Godzilla scene in this book, it's either from Director Hampton's point of view or from Kong's point of view. <laughs> I love how Kong thinks of Godzilla in this book. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Kong's opinion on Godzilla's great. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It? And I love that Kong knows his role too. Hey, listen, if I just hang out down here he ain't gonna bother me. I was like, yeah, I'm with that. But no, that snippet of Godzilla from Godzilla's point of view, the thought process, the... It reminded me so much of Godzilla Dominion's writing. Yes. 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 It was so good. Um... Uh, I... I did really like uh, the fleshing out of Gia and and how she didn't fit in in school yep. and how she she had supposed friends but they were talking bad about her behind her back that happened to me a lot in school I resonated with that um thinking that that she's some kind of freak not because she's deaf but because she's from Skull Island she ha she hung out with monsters yep. you know so she must be a monster herself yep I agree. I love that part with Gia too. I like, I love that how they fleshed her out a lot, because she's a teenager mm -hmm. now. You know, she's a teenager. Exactly. Now. Exactly. Ah, uh, I mean, Doctor Andrews was kind of mostly the same. Yeah. Um, a little more exposition a than lot. even in the movie, and the movie was a lot of exposition on her part. Oh yeah, she was going in. And I liked I liked the, the beginning the, the 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 like the early prologue with her being new to the monarch team and you, you see Sarazawa and um Yes Emma Russell yes, uh, and uh, Sarazawa, Emma Russell and Vivian Graham. Vivian, Vivian Graham, yep. And it I and, and it was Eileen Andrews and I love that that she was like new to the team and and that doctor that they went to talk to about the ice shelf. See, and these are the little things, right? These are the little things we don't see in the movie. The that that ice sediment that should not be there, but it's there. Those little things I really enjoyed about the novel. But oh, then yeah. they come back to bite me in the ass later. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was it was all a, a nice little wrap up of tying that bow and 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 making everything a cohesive whole but we'll get into that shall we <laughs> it's definitely a cohesive whole cohesive plot hole <laughs> but we, we'll get into it um but no yeah I, I loved i loved seeing you know her in the early stages of her career with monarch to where she is now in the book they flesh her out even more by you know from her point of view we don't get it in the movie she's 
like the liaison or the ambassador for Monarch to the UN, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, I like that. She literally gave a TED talk. Oh. Like, like, like the actual TED talk, name and everything. Yes. And that is crazy. And I like how they focused on, uh, not focused, but they, they tell us in the book, she could have been the director of Monarch. And she was like, yeah, nah, <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. I'll do this. And how she thought she wasn't going to be good at it, but turns out she's really great at it. And how was that from Hampton's point of view? That might have been from Hampton's point of view. No, it was both of them. It was, both right? Both of them were offered the, offered the job. They both thought they weren't ready to do it. Uh, uh, Eileen Andrews, her reasoning was she she liked field work more yeah. and, and didn't want to just be stuck behind a desk. And then some wart dogs killed some of their men and almost killed Gia, and that's why she took the desk job up up top on the surface. That's right. Um, and director Hampton at first didn't want the job because she has an aversion to Godzilla. She's scared of that dude. So she didn't think she'd have a sound judgment being the director handling Godzilla, but she took the job anyway. I like how you worded that because later on towards the end of the book we get the revelation as of why... And it's not as, so much as she's afraid of Godzilla, but afraid of what Godzilla could become. And yeah, and I love that throughout the book, from her point of view, she's worrying and worrying even more. Holy shit, this is not what I want. Oh my god, this is exactly what I'm fearing. So I dug that. I, I like the way you worded that there. Let's start with the, the book kicking off. I mean, it goes through the normal paces, the ebbs and flows. I mean, it's it's pretty much beat for beat with the movie. Um, yeah, a lot of it is beat for beat with the movie. The like, as I was reading, I could see the scenes in my head. Absolutely, that's exactly what I was thinking too. Um, there's a couple of scenes that honestly, there's a couple of parts in the book that, that I could see totally being uh, uh, deleted scenes that, I mean... I don't think we want these types of deleted scenes, the quieter moments with the humans, right? Yeah. The ones that make you feel for Gia a little bit more, maybe. Uh, like how she's uh, she wakes up in the middle of the night. Oh, God, I got a, a test tomorrow. These kids are making fun of me. I Let me study this, that, and a third. The idea of Gia and her aunt on Skull Island when they used to watch the butterflies fly in towards the moon. Yeah. And she's, you know, telepathically talking to her aunt. Do you hear that? Is that singing? And her aunt's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I hear nothing. The way that all comes to play later on, I was just like, wow! Why wasn't that in the movie? See, and that's the thing. My favorite character in the fucking MonsterVerse is Gia. Like, it really is. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. Hands I, down, without a doubt. She, It's just a cool character, and the, and the way... It seems like they've set her up. It seems like they've set her up to be a Marvel twin. You know what I mean? Like, legit, a Cosmos. Like, the one. Yeah. And I love that. If, if not having a twin, just, just being the priestess of Mothra, you know? Right. And I love that. So I'm like, I love her characterization. Bernie. Pretty straightforward, just like the movie. But there are quiet moments with Bernie that I was like, man, that would have worked in the movie. Like, they could have gave some of these characters a little bit more time to cook. And it would have... Just a little. Just a little. I mean, granted, this movie is all pure monster action, right? Like, we're, we're not complaining about that. But when the quieter human moments hit in the book, they work. But we don't get to see that on screen. So I was like, damn, man, fuck. Because there are some yeah, really, really... I, I think part of the reason for that is Adam Wingard's, like, vehement, like, hyper-focus on sticking to a two-hour runtime. Uh, because taking all of these other scenes, like, even taking out the references to the comics and stuff, right? But just keeping the quieter moments like that, I don't even think that would have added, like... 20 minutes to the runtime. They probably would have only added like 10 minutes to the runtime. Exactly. And it would have been fine. If that. If that. And that's the thing. I mean, there's a lot more conversation between Gia and Eileen Andrews that I like, you know? 
Um, I mean, a lot more. But what's really good, and possibly the best characterization in the novel, is Kong. It's Kong, dude, yes. Right? Kong literally gets dialogue. You hear his thoughts as words. Yes, 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 yes. And to jump all around and shit, but no, we'll get we'll get to that part later. Just the beginning, Kong getting chased and he's counting it. I love the way they do it. It's more yeah, than we're, we're, like, my he, hands and He's feet. thinking to himself, like, come closer, try me, see what happens, you know. And he's counting. He's counting how many of those wolves are, are chasing him, and he goes, "It's yeah, more yeah. than what's on and my I hands and feet." I love the characterization that he can't count past two. So he he can only uh, like this many fingers, one hand's worth of fingers, right. or something like that. Right. Love, love, love that. Um, Kong was great in this book. Like, I mean, he's great in the oh, movie. Yes. If my wife fucking loves and Suko. Kong. Suko was great too. Yo, even we get his point of view. We, get, we do. We don't. We do. You know whose point of view we don't get though? Scar Kings. We don't. We do not. We get One Eye's point of view. We do. We get One Eye's point of view at least twice. Yes. From what I can read. And that's. And I love the fact that we we finally have a name for that guy. Right. Right. Instead of Ugly Ape Three. Right. Like. <laughs> um. It, yeah. Yeah. Man. They had to do something to fill the book up. It's a short book. It's 308 pages. Uh, and I think, honestly... It's very short reading. Yeah, it might be, as far as, like, the actual novel is concerned, it might be 300 pages, maybe 299 pages, the actual novel. Right? I haven't really looked. Let me look. Yeah. I have it right here with me. It is 310 pages. 310 pages but I mean like as far as the actual story is yeah I, I, I only I went past the acknowledgments and all that and went to the last page of the actual story oh, 310 okay, 300 pages page. okay okay shit alright so that's that. <laughs> print and digital print ladies and gentlemen two different beasts <laughs> the last I mean that's part that, that's partly because and here's one of my gripes with this novel all right you you guys can't see it at home but you can see it you want look at these other novels right oh, yeah. oh, look. they're nice they're uniform they're the same height right yeah, yeah. <laughs> that bothers me you, so much this what do you got? got like three inches on the other novels that shit is the Criterion Collection of DVDs. <laughs> I know. It's it's bothering me so much. Why did you do this, Titan Books? Why? Wow. That is... Yeah. And it's probably the, the least thickest out of all the books in that regard. Yeah, like literally you could have just thickened up the book just like Kong Skull Island because Kong Skull Island is the thickest book out of the three okay and it probably would have been the same level of thickness as that book if it was that tall <laughs> that's ridiculous bro uh to, to to quote to quote my quote in the chat it's an evolved version of the book <laughs> yeah oh my goodness that's crazy but um they had to put these characters, these these monsters, uh, uh, point of view in the book. Because if not, we wouldn't have had a movie. The, the majority of this movie is monster fights. or Yes, yes. You know? And the actual fights themselves, like the description of the choreography, is so much better in this book than GVK's novel. Where GVK's novel was just kind of like a play-by-play, -play. this one you still get the inner thoughts of Kong as he's fighting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I really wish they would have called it a suplex, though. I, I'm not mad. Kong wouldn't have known what a suplex is. <laughs> he goes, no, I don't even think that came from Kong's point of view. I think that was just, like, the narrator talking no, no, to it us. Did. It did. It was Kong's point it of came view? From, it was Kong's point of view. 
because if if I could remember correctly from from what I read, it was like uh, Godzilla lifted uh, him up, and and uh, he he's he, he was seeing the world spin around him as as Godzilla fell on his back. <laughs> and Kong lost his breath, and he and he 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 tried to he, he tried to like his vision went went dark a little bit, and when he fought, and when he came to again, he he saw Godzilla's foot right up against his neck, and he was like, "No, not again, not that, again, that oh, that that was Kong's voice, right? Like 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 that's what I loved about yes. the book." Finding and having Kong's voice was unbelievably dope. I can't, I couldn't stop reading. I'll be, I was like, damn, this shit is so good. Um, and again, because we only got Godzilla in the beginning, and I was upset because I really did like that. I liked Godzilla saying, "Didn't I tell her not to go nowhere? Now I gotta get up and go like, get the business." I would have loved. If the France scene, at the very least, was from Godzilla's point of view instead of Director Hampton's, I love Director Hampton. Don't get me wrong, but the France one should have been from Godzilla's point of view. Absolutely, but it couldn't have been because we went of no, no, that came later. That came later. Um. Oh my God. Oh, here's what I liked. Kong, the beginning, right? When he takes the dead wolf. What? What are they called again? Wart dog. Wart dog. And rips it to show as a sign of intimidation. And then he's all... I mean, you see it in the movie. He's obviously disgusted by it. But just, like, hearing it in Kong's voice, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Cause and I, I love I how they way. call back to GV, GVK with him in the waterfall. And he's like, oh, he had this on Skull Island before. Yeah. It feels nice on the skin and his fur. Yep. Like, he doesn't understand the concept of a shower, but he obviously likes them. So what I like about the novel, and you could get away with this stuff, is the fights we didn't see in the movie, we get. We get. Whether it's a paragraph yeah. or two, we get. We get a fleshed out fight. Kong and the Sea Serpent, when Suko tries to, uh, you know, set him up. Yeah, yeah, it describes Kong cutting off its head. Yep. And that thing and had they even, they even describe they even describe when Kong and Suka were running away, they come back to the lake. Yeah. And there's some wart dogs there eyeing up Suko. Yep. And Kong's like, don't even try it. Yep. Which was great. Like I love all that. And and Kong's the pain threshold. Like things like that when, when he sees Shimo for the first time and the way that turns out. Like, it was so good. But even still, like the <laughs> All right, I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. And I know this is the, the dumbest nitpick of them all, all, right? Because, I mean, even though I think it's fan canon, it ain't canon canon, I wish Kong would have called that damn thing Doug instead of the scavenger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was kind of hoping that this novel would have had more Doug. But, you know, it could, because, like, maybe some, because, you know, Wingard promised, like, eight minutes of Doug, and we never got that in the movie, and I thought maybe it got cut, maybe it's going to be in the novelization. It's not in the novelization, ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry. No, it's not, and ladies and gentlemen, we dig Doug. 1980, that's I love, I love that little guy. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad to finally have him in plastic form. Look at that little fat guy. Is that the Playmates? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm jealous. Okay, I'm going to have to try to find that guy because I, I, I would. I can't even lie. I would I would get I, a Suko and Doug. I would. They're, totally. they're, they're neat. I like them. Um, well, but yeah, no, no, no more Doug than that, and he's not even called Doug in the... Uh, in the comic, I, 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 it's not Kong calling him that. I wish those guys who were like doing uh, putting in in that Monarch Base One, uh, yeah. talking about oh he's he's tr was trying to find a date or something. Oh, I hope he's ready for some interspecies romance. I wish they would have acknowledged. Oh, hey, look, Doug stole his food. That would have been funny. See, that's all you need, right? Like, that's all you need. Like, there's a name. Wingard knows. There's a name. We have dubbed, we have dubbed him Doug. Yeah, that would have been cool. 
They, I like that too. Like again, granted, you, you can't do everything for the movie, but a little bit of characterization with those guys, a little bit more banter between those three people who met their unfortunate face, fate. Um, the fact that it wasn't just Scar King, it was Scar yeah. King and yeah, an Entourage. Everybody. That was crazy. That had Suko along for the ride. That was the one thing I can't he was lie. There. I, 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 when I read that part where Suko was talking about in his head, I'm the only one that kind of looks like him, but he won't acknowledge me. <laughs> and then he, he told... I also love that uh, Director Hampton, I also love that Director Hampton pointed out that when apes ape smile, it's not the same as when humans smile. When apes smile, it's them bearing their teeth and doing threatening stuff like they're about to rip your face off yeah that's true and yeah. fucking yeah. Scar King was smiling a lot but Scar King had a twinkle in his eyes when he smiled at least in the movie he knew what he was doing he's not dumb yeah yeah he yeah, in the movie, those smiles were definitely supposed to be evil, malicious, twisting mustache villain smiles. Absolutely. Uh, but it was cool that they pointed out that that apes do that. Yeah. Um. Uh, was there any like any plot points that I really didn't like about the book? Um. I mean, Trapper came off as a little more preachy in the novel did you get that so you know what i did and that's a wow now that you say it i see what you're saying i didn't because while i'm reading trapper i am seeing trapper and i just felt like it was a natural yeah. progression you know like if the scene would have continued he would have totally done that and i i just think that because the way we read it and the way he played it, watching it, there's something charming about Trapper, right? Reading it, you can only true, get that true. charm that we've seen. So anything after that, we got to interpret in our own heads, right? So I... Right, yeah. That's a great point that you made, the preaching thing, because he does, he does come off a little bit, but at the same time, I'm... I just, I just found him as like... One of those dudes that just cares about the earth. You know what I mean? Like, he's not trying to tell you yeah, what to he's, do. He's, he's just trying to say, hey, you know what, man? If we don't do this, maybe this works out better in the long run. And I like that. That's how I took it. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I can see where you're coming from with that. I mean, it's just a minor nitpick at the end of the day with, oh, yeah. with that pointing out. Although um, I will say, I, I will say... That one conversation he has with Bernie, and I don't remember if it was in the movie or not, but it seemed, it, I, I swear to God, when I read it, I was like, that had to be in the movie, because that makes all the sense. Where he's talking about, uh, when he tells Bernie, you know, and do you, but if this gets out, then these people's lives oh, are yeah, over. Oh yeah, that part was in the movie. Okay, yeah, see, and I love that. Like, so, I didn't pay attention in the movie to that, but in the book, I was like, yeah, that's fucking dope, because I was invested in the book. That's the crazy thing. I know what the monsters were going to do, right? So I wanted more exposition from the book. I wanted more of that background shit. Again, they reference the comic books, which I love. They bring in all that into continuity. The the prologue, again, you've got that doc, the, the, the scientist that's on this uh, glacier in Greenland that found a fucking ice sheet that should not be there. Um, and Sarazawa pops up and was like, yeah, we want to talk to you. I love all that, yeah. right? All of that stuff. That's what I was like really, really reading into. That's why I paid attention to that scene with Trapper. Because I thought that was actually really fucking cool. Because, yeah, why are we going to do this? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would we fuck up this? Be it goes, it's like King Kong versus Godzilla. Or even better. I'll, I'll give you one better. I'll give you one for your namesake. Gamera versus Baragon. When they go to the island yeah. and they're pulling the cigarettes out and he's trying to get to bribe him to take him to the, the fucking cave where the opal is. Like, 
That's crazy yep. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, this has been going, going on forever. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, the, the, the final battle being not from the monster's perspective, like, the whole time, but from, like, like dipping back and forth between the monsters and Hampton and even uh, Andrews. How did you feel about that? Well, because you know we're talking about when they're floating. It was just the monsters. There was nobody there. Yeah, we're talking about when they're floating. Float there. In Hollow not, Earth, not, both when they're floating and Rio, I, I count all that as one battle. Okay, because yeah, because Ham- uh, oh Hampton, I thought you said Andrews. You did say Andrews. Yeah, yeah, because Andrews was there when they were floating around, floating around, and then also Hampton was there when they were in Rio. Okay, so. The floating around thing, the way they describe it in the book, the way it happens, I was like, all right, I guess that kind of makes more sense than them trying to feed me spiel in the movie where I'm like, what? Okay, whatever. So, yeah, because you can read it now. It's print. It's in front of your face. You can literally rewind and read it again, right? Until you understand it. So I was like, okay, okay. I did not mind... I especially, I'll tell you exactly when I, where I don't mind, because this was like, oh, that's dope. In the movie, it's there, but the novel conveys the emotion. When the heave is falling, and they're going down, and Mothra comes and saves them. But Eileen Andrews sees Gia on Mothra, and she's like, thank God she's safe. That, that is where I was like, yeah, I don't mind this back and forth yeah yeah and i i kind of wish that we could have seen geo riding mothra i know Same. that mothra's huge and stuff but like her body is not that big compared to her wings so we should be able to see geo when when we have close-ups of mothra's face and stuff seriously man that would have been fucking dope are you kidding me i would have loved it but it might <laughs> It might have skewed to the, okay, this might be extremely goofy now for other people. I would have loved it. I would have loved it. But, um, you know, Normieville might have been like, hang on, what? <laughs> yeah, we the already had to... Riding the giant moth. Right, we, we already had fucking floating lizards and monkeys. Stop. But I digress. Um, let's talk about Scar King controlling Shimo. I think the movie did a better job at conveying that relationship than the novel actually did. I can see that. I can see that because it was a lot of a lot of speculation in the novel, a lot of theories, and not just the visual storytelling doing its thing. Yes. Absolutely. And that's and, and, like like yeah. you have Kong thinking that the the crystal was part of her body. You have the, the the monarchs thinking that it's like part of her back spines, and nobody really explains how the crystal does the thing that it does. Whereas in the movie, it knows we don't particularly care the whys. We're just here for the ride, and and we we know the crystal causes her pain. And that's why she does what what he what what he wants her to do, and that makes sense. Yeah, it's so much better seeing it than reading it, <laughs> which was yeah. great. You know, it's crazy. I can, like, I can definitely see that. Yeah, I like. I don't. I don't feel her pain in the novel. In the movie, like you said again in the beginning, visually visual storytelling. You can see pain in the eyes. You can see when there's, like, uh, uh, hesitation. And I love that. And I love that. And, and the fact that Scar King is just like, what do you think you're doing? I yeah. like that. And I, I don't think, in the novel, I don't think there was that, that little moment when he first, like, tells her to, to, to attack Kong, where she first roars at him in defiance. And then he does he, he does it again to really hurt her. I don't think that part is in the novel. I think it's just 
him pointing at her, him pointing at Kong, and then she does the thing. Yeah. 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 I God, I gotta watch that movie again. <laughs> I mean, again, it's like, now it's just for fun. Now it's just for fun. You know, even yeah. with the gripes, now it's just for fun. I watch the other movies, and whether I love them or hate them, I, I, I'd be like, fuck all this part, right? I gotta watch this movie again just for the fun of it. Because, again, this is the one with the most monster action. It's And it's ridiculously over the top, but in a great way. Again, visually pleasing and storytelling, that, that makes all the sense. The relationship with Kong and Suko. When Kong is calling him Little Ape, and yeah, then sits small ape. down, Small Ape, and then sits down and tells him, Kong, points to yeah. him. Yeah. And he says, Suko. I mean, I, I that was a th that was another thing. I love that Kong was talking about how with the little people or the little whatever he called them, the, the humans, um, the small ones, the small ones, he can communicate, especially with Gia. I love that he knew Gia's name. See, th like those things really made me happy, right? And then when he gets to when he sees the apes. And he can't communicate the same way. Oh, genius. Love it. I fucking yeah, love it. Yeah, because he's so displaced from the ape culture, he doesn't know how they talk. He only knows how he talks and and the two quote-unquote languages he knows, which is his own way of silently speaking and sign language. Man, yep. Which I thought was fantastic. Fantastic. And then again, I love the grunts, the... If Kong grunts one way, it means this. Like, all of that in the book, I really dug that. And granted, we can't hear the grunts, but we know the movie, so that's cool. But when he sits down and learns Suko's name, that is such a cool thing. That you can't convey that in the movie. That's an absolute impossibility, right? But to read that, to get the name across so you can sell toys, right? Instead of just yeah. calling it Small Ape or Mini Kong. I loved it. I thought it was And genius. I love at the end of the book, Gia learns his name too. Yes. And Bernie was like, oh yeah, fine. We're, we're, we'll call him Suko and not Mini Kong from now on. I'll bite it. I'll bite <laughs> It's so good. Oh, man. All right. Um. Uh, what, what, what was it? I, I just had it about uh, uh, about something about the, the, the... Oh, yeah. When Kong first, like, renamed Suko before he learned his name, he went from small ape to child. To child. Was I the only, was I the only one who, who, instead of child, he, I wanted him to go, boy. Boy. Oh, my God. Is it? <laughs> is it not, though? Like, seriously. It totally is. It's, I've been calling Kratos Kong since Kong Skull Island. And they, and they didn't disappoint me. They gave him the chains of Olympus in that movie. They gave him the fucking axe in the second in GVK. I mean, come on. Now they gave him a son. For crying out loud. Oh, Kratos and the fucking son. arm. And the arm. And the fucking yeah. arm. I mean, come on. The, I, it, it is what the, it is. The, the golden fleece. It is absolutely bonkers and insane. That's another thing I really loved about the novelization that we don't get in the movie. Um... The idea, especially this, uh, again, comes from uh, Hampton. When Kong comes out <laughs> with the fucking arm on. And she's like, oh, great. How am I going to explain that to the bureaucrats? <laughs> yes. Yes, I you get the it. political implications of things where that's just completely ignored in the movie. It completely. And honestly, that is very, very interesting. Hearing that in a novel, it makes so much more sense. And again, what uh, that that first live stream we had where we were plotting the uh, the next movie, it's humanity versus Godzilla at this point. Yes. And he, yes. these are the reasons. And I'm like, yeah, I'm totally down for all of that. But um, um so 
a little callback to the GVK novelization. You know how when uh, Godzilla first made landfall in Pensacola, it, it was from the perspective of this random fishing boat guy, and he was like, oh my god, it's Godzilla. Uh-huh. Kong coming up out of the pyramid was from the perspective of this random dude in a cab, and he was having a full-blown panic attack thinking it was this ancient Egyptian death god, and then all of a sudden, oh, oh, it's just Kong. It's just, oh. No, his girlfriend had to calm him down. Mean, it's just Kong. His girlfriend had to calm him down. She was like, no, ain't that just Kong? Oh, okay. Woo. Well, I think at this point they know Kong good, and Godzilla we don't know right now. Yeah. But still, I just found that funny. It's just a 300-foot ape capable of destroying a city by just walking. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but the movie and the novelization both, do, they do a great job at showing the humanity of Calm. Yes, yes. They really do a great job. Both, both, both medias. So let's get into it, because we got to get into it. Let's talk about Godzilla and the Tiamat situation. Because oh, here's the, the deal. Tiamat situation. Here's the deal. In the movie, I bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. Bought it. Bought it. Godzilla's going there because that's where the extra radiation from the sun is coming from. And he's going to evolve. And then the book went ahead and did something that really pissed me the fuck off. Oh, you mean the, the integrating Tiamat's DNA into his being. That's exactly what I mean. That is exactly what I mean. I don't like that because now... That opens the fucking door for Godzilla to sprout wings if he wanted to. And I'm not feeling I that. mean... I, I don't know if they're going to go that far, though. Absolutely. I don't think so either. But the movie doesn't give you that explanation. The novelization does. And even before I read the novel, I swear to God, I don't know if it was you, JR, or Chase, maybe even Rob, who said something, or maybe it was something I read on the internet that <laughs> says something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. I think it was it was me... Because I was the first one to catch uh, other people who were reading the novel like months before we did. Okay. Who were just putting out cliff notes of like the things that were added to the novel from the movie. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that, I was like, I don't like that. I don't like the idea of Godzilla absorbing the DNA. Now, don't get me wrong. I can't say that and then on the other side of the coin say... I fucking love Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla 1993 because that's pretty much what Godzilla does to Rodan. Yeah. That's pretty much what Godzilla does to Mothra in King of the Monsters. Pretty much. It, it's absorbing the DNA. The difference is there wasn't a radical change for either either time. You know, Godzilla got fire, you know, the spiral breath finally when he absorbs Rodan and Godzilla went nuclear extra nuclear meltdown goji when Mothra fucking yeah. symbiotic relationship patterns. right this was different this was like wow this is where we actually see now, a transformation to, to quell that a little bit the absorbing DNA thing was only a, a theory on Monarch's part they didn't know for sure what was going on but it's a very plausible make sense theory and in this book monarch was not wrong in any of their theories you know going forward in this book true in this book everything monarch said might be was so that's how I, i'm reading that when i got i'm like oh fuck godzilla's godzilla's a dna vampire now great it's just what i want for my giant monster hero damn it um, I will say this too, a little disappointing with the novelization. There was really no description of Evo Goji, except for really. the spikes were different and colored pink. Well, they didn't even say pink. They said like magenta, magenta red. Magenta red, right, right, yep. That was my only, I was like, yo, but the, 
the one thing I hated the most, the fucking tail. Like, the, honestly, that's why I don't like that thing, right? It's the tail. Everybody knows that. It's not a secret, right? Because he didn't use yeah, it. Yeah, that's not even that's not even acknowledged in the novel. That's not acknowledged. The fucking the 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 elbow spikes are not acknowledged. I'm okay with the elbow spikes. I really am. I can't lie. I like I like you know, squeak. Little fucking uh uh forearm action and cut your throat at the same time. Yeah, why not? One thing the novel did better than the movie was convey the threat that Shimo and Scar King would be. Thus Godzilla having to evolve. Yeah, yeah, where where, you know, after after the initial exposition dump that we saw in the movie in the cave, we get we get Trapper and 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 Eileen Andrews talking while Gia's playing her games. We get a little extended scene with that where they just get the the massive drop that Shimo froze Ghidorah. And here, my good friend, my dear friend, my lovely friend, this is where the lore is broken. This is it. You can say what you want, but that right there breaks everything. It destroys lore. In King of the Monsters, Godzilla and Ghidorah have an ancient rivalry. And if you're gonna say, because Godzilla kicked Ghidorah's ass, if it wasn't for the Oxygen Destroyer, Godzilla wins that fight, and Ghidorah's dead, and it's the end of the movie. Right? But plot device, let's throw something in there from the past and have a good old time. No. Godzilla and Ghidorah, this is the ancient rivalry. Nothing was there before to contradict that. And here's where I'm going to get to the nitty gritty. The prologue happens in 2016. Two years after the events of uh, the uh, 2014's movie. And, and three, three years, years before, before 2019. So that being said, Sarazara, Sarazawa, Graham, Emma, they would have fucking known that Godzilla did not put Ghidorah in the ice. There's no ancient rivalry. None of that shit. None of that shit. Okay, but like, there still could be because, like, it didn't contradict that it was only Shimo who sealed him away. It was, like, literally, it could have been a situation where Godzilla was fighting King Ghidorah, he knocked him out, did not have a way to keep him out, and told Shimo freeze his ass wrong thank you i was hoping you say something like that so i can shovel this dirt more onto this grave the reason why that's not the case is because eileen andrew says when i saw that cave painting back way back then godzilla was afraid first off that was the dumbest thing i ever heard i was like what how could you see that on a cave painting that's just scribbles and then she tries to justify it in the novel by saying that's what I felt the artist was trying to convey. So that being said, Godzilla ain't commanding Shimo to do shit. Godzilla should have been frozen in ice. Now, if they would have went back in the original 2014 idea in theory that they found Godzilla in ice, oh, then this makes all the sense in the world. And I ain't mad. But that's not what we got. So we're going to disregard what happened before. We're going to take away the law. And I swear to God, I am defending King of the Monsters right now. Me! I am defending King of the Monsters. I don't hate that movie. I, I, I keep saying I don't hate that movie. It's just things I dislike. But what I really liked about that movie was the idea that Godzilla and Ghidorah have an ancient rivalry. You can say ancient to the kids, to us. It could mean Toho. And just, you, you just throw it out like, yeah, it's an ancient rivalry. They've been doing this shit since the 60s. We 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 didn't we weren't around to see those in the theaters, but we were damn sure around to see them. We were damn sure around to see it done multiple times. So we were damn sure around to see one of the best Godzilla movies ever made, Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, nineteen ninety one. Right, Game Games? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Oh my God! See what I'm saying? Because remember, the ocean, the coldness of the ocean, kept Ghidorah alive. For a thousand years, or however, two hundred years. Right, remember, remember that. Remember that. That that's canon. That's canon. 
but I digress. Um, that was my... I was so upset with that. Because that's not mentioned in the movie at all. No, no. And that's that's that, that could probably be a point towards the movie where it... It, some things are better left unexplained, you know. Exactly. That's what I like. Where, but then it, 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 it then but then, and that's the seesaw I had with the book and the movie. You know how I feel about the movie. Godzilla did not need to evolve to fight any one of these things, at all. If anything, they kind of in, in the movie and 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 I feel like Godzilla's girth. Right? His size, his weight, his girth, his stamina. He's running. He's jumping. They were giving us everything before he evolved. They were true, giving us everything. True. He was such a formidable force against Shimo, and he would have wiped the fucking floor with that monkey. He would have wiped the floor with that monkey. One tail swipe. That's the one thing Kong couldn't do. Kong can't tail swipe. Godzilla could. Oh, you want to flip around and throw this fucking stupid chain? I got atomic breath and a tail. That's it. And you wanna you, you you wanna just throw this whip around? I'll catch it with my teeth and throw you with it, dude. For real. So that was like, in the movie. That's where I was like, there's no need for this evolution. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate the design. I just hate the tail, and I only hate the tail because it wasn't utilized. You know, I said that. I said that a million times. Oh yeah, you you. You said that all the way up leading to the movie. If he doesn't utilize those that thagomizer, it's going to be the stupidest thing ever. And that bothered me. But the design, I ain't mad at. I've got that Spiral Studio statue coming. I can't fucking wait. But it was really, it was for nothing. The novelization gave it more of a gravitas, more of a need for Godzilla to be evolving. So I respected that. My beef, though, again, is... Shimo didn't put Ghidorah on ice because now you're just completely negating King of the Monsters. And while I'm not mad at that, right? You want to throw that in a Far Corner Universe thing, right? Because, you know, multiverse is the fucking key to everything nowadays. Fine. That movie still holds substantial weight. Kong is in that movie and Godzilla's in that movie. And that movie leads up to Godzilla versus Kong, which is my favorite tied at times with 2014 movie in the monsterverse so i was very yeah. upset i was very upset with that i really was um and there was one more thing that now I, for the life of me i can't fucking think of but i was just like that's not right i mean it, i i liked how they they explained that even though godzilla was st with a by evolving was kind of on even playing field with with Shimo. It still looked like Shimo could just change the tide. Oh, that was yeah, great point there. When they land in the Hollow Earth and they get up and start running, Kong's uh, perspective in that moment, he's different. He's talking about Godzilla. He's different. What is he? Oh my God. Not not worried. It wasn't worried. What was the fucking word? It wasn't worried. But it was like he might be second guessing this battle. And then Kong's yeah. like, nah, not that. But I was like, wow. That's so unlike Godzilla. Man, I was mad. I can't lie. I was mad. I was like, damn it. But the description of the battles, everything works. The book really knocks it out the park in that regard. It's just where there's some great extra shit, there's some extra shit that smells. That to me was stinky. <laughs> that, that to me was like, that don't smell good. That bothered. I I feel that. I feel that. To me, with that scene, I can I can make some mental gymnastics and and even though you shot it down, I can still make those mental gymnastics. And it also it, it's for the purpose of setting Shimo up as the thing that needs Godzilla's involvement and needs him to evolve. Yeah. But at the same time, I will say this though, watching King of the Monsters today, there was a line in that movie where they was like, he's steadily evolving. And I was like, well, fuck. This is where Wingard, he took that one line and went bonkers. 
<laughs> yeah, of course he is. Well, we're going to evolve him even more now. Fuck it. Um, I really hope he devolves next movie. Seriously. Apparently, he's going to evolve even further. Space Godzilla. He's going to get... I'm telling you, he's going to... All of a sudden, he's going to awaken the fucking DNA of Ghidorah, grow wings, and fly away. Fly no, no, space. no. He'll, he'll, he'll sprout crystals on his shoulder and, and fly by turning into a crystalline form. You know if that happens, I'm done with the MonsterVerse, right? Like, I'm, I'm literally going to run away. I'm going to run away. I'm shutting the podcast down. I love you all. I'll give you my phone number. Text me every now and then. I'm done. Where's Toho? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Give me Godzilla Plus. Can't give me Godzilla Plus for the love of Christmas. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, I will, another thing. I got to be honest. It's another lawbreaker, if you will. If you will indulge me. You go back to the first two movies, right? Not Skull Island, mm-hmm. the first two Godzilla movies. I mean, and even King of the Monsters kind of throws this by the wayside. But that first Godzilla movie acknowledges that there are more than one Godzilla. And that Godzilla is, you know, the latest in the line. You're, you're talking about how the Titan War was now retconned to be just Godzilla and the other Titans that he commanded. That's, that's absolutely exactly where I was going. Yes. It, it defeats the purpose of having the Mutos infecting a Godzilla species, a Godzilla Saurus. You know? What was, what was or, that? As, as, as the, uh, the Godzilla Aftershock... Uh, comic called them Dagon. Dagon, thank you. Yes. Infecting Dagon and Dagon dying and these things incubating inside of a Godzilla. That's not to say we need Mutos to do that and everything, but the fact that there were multiple Godzillas, one of the things when when that first movie was coming out, one of the things I swore up and down was going to happen was we were going to see multiple Godzillas. Didn't happen, but the idea was there. We saw the Godzilla bones. It was there. So I was like, I bet. And I, still, I love that movie. I love it. It brought Godzilla to America the way I did not see coming. And I fucking love it. Oh, yeah. King of the Monsters, we get the ancient rivalry between Ghidorah and Godzilla. Perfect. Fine. Let's add Mothra to the mix. Per- By the way, Mothra... Well, I, I, I got to touch on Mothra in the novel. There is something there, is something there that I wish was in the movie. That the novel fucking nailed. That made me so happy. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, But yeah, you know, the ancient rivalry. Then we get to this. And I'm like, fucking really? Like, really? Like, what was this fight? Because here's the deal. You look at Kong and Kong's evolution. From Skull Island to GVK to GXK. There's one glaring thing right in front of us in GXK Kong is gray he's gray Mm -hmm. Kong's younger than Scar King yeah Kong's younger than all those apes how the fuck but they're 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 balding that's how that's how you convey their age okay yes but at the same time okay so I chucked this actually (laughs) I'm gonna kick myself in the dick here I chalk I chalked up Kong's graying to stress related in the Hollow Earth. Probably. And to me that makes sense. To me that makes sense. Cause he's still young, in, relatively young in regards to what Scar King is. Yeah, because Scar King's like thousands of years old. And, and relatively speaking, Kong's only like uh like forty or fifty. No, 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 no. Because he was a teenager in the 70s. Oh, oh. Yeah, but remember, this movie This movie takes place in 2027? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. So he's it older does. than the 50s. He's, he's way older than that. Yeah. He, 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 okay, maybe, maybe closer to 70, 80. He's close to 100. Let's say that. And I'm fine with that. He looks good for his age, right? He looks good for his age. But for the love of God, like Godzilla... Honestly, couldn't beat Scar King. 
and the legions of monsters. That's what I really want to know. Like, who did he have at his beck and call? Yeah, besides like Mothra and Behemoth, who who did he have? Right. That's exactly. Uh, um, maybe um, oh my God, the the marsh monster, the 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 swamp monster. Oh, uh, Amulek. Yes, maybe him, maybe him, because he's another one that was kind of like docile and. Yo, I'm good, bro. I'll just, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'm I'm just going. I'm peace out. It you know. Is. So maybe those three, but it it just it was so unnecessary. It doesn't make sense in the grander scheme of the monster verse. It doesn't. You start fraction. You start fracturing. And it, it's it's also a kind of a direct contradiction to like cave paintings we've seen from like GBK and stuff where we saw multiple Godzillas and multiple Kongs on on a cave painting absolutely fucking king of the monsters I mean was that Godzilla they showed or was that another thing you know or I, it had to be Godzilla because they said this is where he lives <laughs> but it's just like it's things like that that really drives me crazy and I was like come on and that's where I talk about breaking the lore because honestly as King of the Monsters did not break anything that uh, um, 2014 set up and GVK didn't break anything that those other two movies plus Skull Island set up this one went in a different direction and they start breaking things I can get behind an evolved Godzilla. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense is for those? Nah. You evolve Godzilla yeah. in the next movie because there's something there's something coming from space or something that's ridiculous? Fine, no doubt. Like I said, the book did a better job of um, giving you that threat. Like, like hammering home. Yo, Scar King's a real fucking dickhead and he's got Shimo who apparently fucking flash froze King Ghidorah and I'm mean, like and that caused cool. all the ice ages and caused all the ice ages for the love of Christmas but then, and so those are my biggest biggest beefs with the book I'm sure there's one more and it's probably coming up but those are my biggest like I just um, so you really wanted to talk about Mothra oh yeah please let's do it I feel like it was explained so much better in the book than what we saw in the movie. Because it looked, just looked like energy and then she, she just comes out. Whereas in the book, it's explained it's a chrysalis. It's, it's a cocoon. It's there. It's there. And the way I read it, maybe I read it wrong, but the way I read it was only Gia could see it. Maybe the queen too. Maybe the queen... She wasn't a queen, but that's how... That was the closest word they can get um, yeah. in the Iwi language to their matriarch. I was... And that right there, see, that was where I was like, God, what? I already like this girl. Wait, now you're making me love this little kid. Like, I want to adopt Eileen Andrews and Gia. Like, goes back to the aunt and seeing the moths flying to the moon. And can you hear them? Is that singing? What are you talking about? And only Gia could hear it. And yeah, yeah, it. and then she reaches out and she hears the singing again. Oh, it was so fucking beautiful. So good. So when you read that part, what do you hear when reading that? I mean, I hear Mothra's theme, you know? I hear Mothra's theme, but I don't hear the Mosura. I hear the... No, no. I hear the Cosmos theme. Yeah. When, she, when they're singing... When Mothra, uh, you know, uh, cocoons itself, that's what yeah, I hear. Yeah, Mahara Masura. Yes. Oh, God, that's what I hear. Oh, my God. See, that's all I need in life. So all I need in life. You Again, yo, King of the Monsters, when they play Requiem, when Godzilla acknowledges, and again, mm -hmm. that's, an that's another thing that drives me crazy. The acknowledgement when Godzilla is brought back in King of the Monsters and he's right above the submarine there is an acknowledgement 
That's where Russell was like, I know what the fucking other thing is. It's us. It's the humans. She 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 put all that shit together to, to control the monsters. It's us. Godzilla recognized that and acknowledged them. Like, <laughs> what are we doing with the big also, guy? Also, th- th- there's something there's something that the Cliff Notes got wrong, right? Where there was a bunch of speculation from Andrews and even even uh, Director Hampton that it's the same Mothra, but you know reincarnation's still a thing, and they acknowledge that too. Yeah, they and. Do. It could also not be the same Mothra, or it could be the original Mothra, like like the the the, and the one in King of the Monsters was just one of her children. Right. That was something I always gave thought about in the Showa series. Is like Godzilla always killed Mothra, right? But then when he didn't, they were always children. Yeah. You know. So when did that Mothra? I want one of those children to grow up and have that relationship with Godzilla. That's the one thing I love the MonsterVerse for, the relationship. We saw that in Final Wars. We, we saw did. that in Final Wars. And I love that. I do. I really do love the relationship between Mothra and Godzilla. And I think, especially and, in this movie. And and sorry, Mothzilla shippers. It's not romantic. Kong confirmed they're like family. Bro, that scene written down for my eyes to read and my brain to comprehend not watch on the screen but read and comprehend when Kong was like he fucking got me (laughs) he fucking got me when Godzilla puts the fucking foot on the chest Kong's words was my neck I love that too but when Godzilla puts that foot down and it was like it's over it's over now I kill you I told you you do this I do that when Mothra showed up, I mean, I even the way Kong recognized the way Godzilla was looking at Mothra, I thought that was genius. And it does get conveyed in the movie. You can see it. Because, again, we have, we have that connection with King of the Monsters. So why are we ruining lore? Why are we picking and choosing what we want? We got to stop that. We got to stop that. Yeah. The, the, I mean, literally, and, and it kills and me. And this because... is, since this is the first instance of it, yes. we, sh- we, we, can, we, can, we can try to nip this in the bud. You we, know, get we their really voices could. heard. We really could write this ship. We really could write this ship. You're absolutely right. We really could write this ship because this is the first instance. Again, nothing was compromised in the four movies leading up to this. Nothing. Even even the, the, the fair novelizations. Right. See, and that's the thing. And and that and again, that that is my biggest gripe with the novelization was they're cucking Godzilla. They they're literally cucking Godzilla. And I'm like, no, that's not who he is. Like we've got four movies showing that's not it. That's not three movies. But that's not it. And and you're gonna do that in the novel, whereas in the movie, that doesn't it's get fine. conveyed, right? It doesn't get conveyed, and Godzilla just evolves, where he could have easily handled both of those things by himself in his regular form, and evolved next movie. They jump the gun, um, and I think it's it. I, I think it's it's sad for that. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. A hypothetical. Do you think Wingard was like, fuck it, I gotta shoot my load here? Because I don't know if I'm gonna get a third one? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Because he has gone on record multiple times saying that if we want more, we gotta go to the theater. Sort of like Doherty. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. You know who didn't do that? Gareth Edwards. You know who didn't do that? No. Nah. Jordan Voigt Roberts. Nope. Or Robert Voigt Jordan, whatever his name is. You know? They were just making self-contained movies, whereas Skull Island had a little bit of hints at the greater universe, but that's that was basically it. And it was at the very, very end with cave paintings of all I things. Feel like, I feel like now that GXK has made money, right? I feel like now that GXK has made money, and we're getting more of these things. 
I feel like Legendary now needs to make a roadmap. Kind of like Marvel did with Phase 1. Mm. I, I, I feel like a roadmap and, and having a lore master to reel in this stuff and keep everything, you know, on the same page would be phenomenal for the franchise. Yeah. So here's the good thing in that regard. In the movies, which again, that's going to be the true continuity, right? Yeah, that's the that's that's the true continuity. Everything else is just extra, even the comics. Exactly. So in the movie, they never said Shimo froze Ghidorah. You know, Ghidorah. Yeah. That's so great. they could they could just they, they could just take that out, right? Or not even acknowledge it at all. That was just a book only thing. That's a book only thing. The evolving Godzilla thing, fine, sure, why not? Maybe Godzilla was getting tired. Who knows? I mean, you look at Godzilla at the end of 2014, he looks tired. He's tired. Yeah. But in 2019, uh, King of the Monsters, he's like, fuck it, let's go. Let's go. Godzilla versus Kong, there was only one threat. One. And he put him down twice. Put him down twice, twice until Mecha Godzilla pops and up. And he wasn't even, and he wasn't even the threat that Godzilla was focused on. Right, which is crazy, right? And then we get this one. So yeah, all right, evolve Godzilla, do your damn thing. Great, no doubt. He should have got the fatality on Scar King. I'm just saying, with the tail, for the love of God, for the love of God, that tail. And that's the only problem I have you know, with it. That's the only problem I have with it. You know, you know that, that, that one podcast right before the movie came out where you were saying you wanted the fatality to be Godzilla with the tail. And I was like, okay, but, but what if Shimo did that? And then it actually happened. I knew that was going to happen. I was just st trying to steer you in the right direction. <laughs> oh, you read a spoiler? Yeah. You're a dirtbag. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, but see, but that's why I don't listen to y'all, though. None of, no, I never listen to y'all. <laughs> no, again, like, <laughs> not watching any trailers after the initial ones. I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm done. But, um, yeah. Last things that I did like about the book, um, Hampton's relationship revealed with Godzilla. Yes. Yes, where she was in Honolulu, dude. She yeah. was there when Godzilla fought the, 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 the male Muto. And I love how they described her seeing the, or, you know, the tsunami that he brought with him. Yeah. And how it was the like male it looked Muto. Like the, the male Muto was coming right for her, and then Godzilla blocked her path, and for a moment she thought they made eye contact. She's on the 20th floor. I, and I, man, I won't, because this was dope. I was like, wow, I love this. And the male Muto basically broke through um, the walls. And she was startled. And she was like, holy shit, what the fuck? And the male Muto was coming at her. And Godzilla just, psh, nope. And then, like, like you said, the idea of making eye contact. And the way she says, he could have went towards me. He could have went towards more buildings. He took them to the ocean, basically unpopular area, yeah. someplace where there's going to be he less. He took casualties. him out to sea. He took him out to sea. Man, that's the Godzilla I love in the MonsterVerse. That is it. Not this. This you said this also before the movie. You said, oh man, because maybe you fucking knew already. You Now that I know what you just... You said, <laughs> what if this is just like Final Wars? Fuck! Fuck! That's exactly what this Godzilla... is. not Final Wars the movie, but that's exactly what this Godzilla is. It's Final Goji. That's the mindset of yep. this Godzilla. And I said I was going to love it if that was it. But it wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't it. He killed. He killed two monsters. That's it. Literally. But he killed them really fast, just like Final Goji. 
that's fair and facts that you can't deny that. <laughs> he did. He did. He fucking did. Um, but yeah, no. Made them look like jobbers. They were total jobbers. Oh, they were total jobbers. I felt bad the TMF fight. I was like, wow. That's fucked up. Because, again, and, it know, was... Something... Yeah. Something I've been saying about uh, the Scylla fight, where I thought it was a three-strike rule, where the first strike was her pulling up on him after he beat the Ghidorah, and before uh, they all bowed, it looked like they were going to gonna scrap with him. I thought that was strike one. Strike two was the events of Godzilla Dominion with her with that nuclear... Uh, bomb and then strike three would be what what's going on leading up to rome but no they acknowledged it it was a two strike rule you fuck up once that's fine you fuck up again you're dead you're dead you're dead and that's the thing i liked with uh hampton's uh analysis of godzilla going after tiamat she was like they fought godzilla was dominant tiamat left said okay no doubt i'm going to bed and that's where i've been and that's the thing that I did like with Hampton going back where she was like please don't do it Godzilla please don't just go there and start a fight there's no reason Tim Matt did what you wanted it to do but yeah. Godzilla was like uh 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 I'm going in uh, I, I want that I want that home I give want, it to me give it to me crazy oh man there's so much more to dissect I mean Kong you know, looking up at the sky, seeing the war bats and saying, they're not really hard to kill, but if there's enough around you, you're in trouble. Kong, you were dead with the second one. That shit had you dead to rights. It was the humans that saved you. Stop lying, Kong. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, What did you think? Because, like, it wasn't conveyed very well in the movie that this was the light source, but what did you think about them hammering home the fact that the light source in the Hollow Earth was the crystals. Be I say this because this is a direct response to Elon Musk, of all people, because he pointed out on Twitter in GBK, where's the light source in the Hollow Earth? This makes no sense. And Adam Wingard made sure in both the movie and the, the novelization, apparently, even more so in the novelization, that the light source in the Hollow Earth is the crystals. Okay, so since I'm not on Twitter and I don't get into Twitter stuff, one, I gotta acknowledge that Elon Musk went and seen GVK. I mean, come on, this dude is like one of the fucking premier billionaires of our time, right? Like, fuck, he saw GVK? That's a win! That's a win for Godzilla fans! Like, people think about that! Like, this multi-fucking billionaire dude saw Godzilla versus Kong. The richest man in the world, yes. Yeah, and he asked the fucking question. I love it. The question was acknowledged and solved. I don't hate the idea of the crystals being the light source. That makes sense. I want to know how they shut off for nights. Right? How is there a night in the Hollow Earth? Like there that? is a night in the Hollow Earth because when um when when Monarch Outpost One gets attacked, it's at night. It's dark. True, true. Okay. Yeah. And even Kong yeah. says there's nights. Yeah, how does... How... Like, it is it just, like, the positioning of the Earth with the sun that, that causes the crystals to light up a certain way? Or, like, what, you know? So that is exactly what I was thinking. But then I started thinking time zones. And then I started getting way too deep. And then I said, let me just read the book. You know, like, but because that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, maybe it's in the way it's positioned with the sun. And I don't even want to get into it because, again, what did uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters give us? Time travel. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the time displacement and all that. So I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. You know what? I don't give a fuck. I don't care anymore. I don't care. <laughs> but that's... Disbelief thoroughly suspended. Right. Look, to honestly, I wish they were Cetopians, but they're not Cetopians because they're underground, they're not underwater. But I digress all of that shit. I like what they did with the Hollow Earth here in this particular movie. 
I loved what they did in the novel. They gave a lot more depth and detail. Uh, yes. The staring content, like all of the, the, the telepathy and all that shit. Love. I loved it. I loved it. I love how they... I tr- love Kong's confidence. We're like, oh, how dare they do this to him? He is calm. Yes. Until he's got to run away. <laughs> Until he's got to run away, yeah. Until he's got to run away. But no, yeah, like... All of it. It just... It, it makes sense. I love the fact... And this is, again, something that they didn't break law from. Where they said... Uh, in previous movies that... Life originated in the earth, inside the earth, and came out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, that's dope. But at the same time, you can't you can't be running around at the mouth saying like King Ghidorah didn't get beat by Godzilla because you know that was established. That might make me hate King of the Monsters more than Rodan's Roar. Had to throw it in Oh my gosh. Had to throw it in there. Damn novel. But no, again, like we said, the movie doesn't acknowledge that. So we go with the movie as the official canon. We go with the the true canon, yes. What do you think? The, the, The movie didn't acknowledge this, but the fact that... So when I saw the movie and Eileen Andrews was telling Gia, you know, I want you to be happy, whatever she said there. Basically, you know, these are your people, you're home. And Gia yeah. was like, no, you're my home. We're together. Like, she used her words against me. Right? Like, that's what she says. I thought that that rang to me, they're going back up. But in the book, they decide to stay down. Just for a little bit. See, but including I Bernie. I include Bernie. I love that, too. I love that. But see, and I didn't take it as just a little bit. I took it as they're going to be here for as long as it takes for Gia. Okay, so here's my take on this, right? Uh Uh-huh. If you rewatch the movie, which I did after I finished the book. Why? Did you go to the movies, Gam Gam? Yes. Good answer, good answer. (laughs) (laughs) Um... During that montage, right, uh, uh, like, not montage, but like, kind of a montage, like with the day after day music, like right at the end, okay. right? You see Trapper hugging both Gia and Andrews, and he's he has his back against the heave. I think that, that the, them staying behind was actually a cut scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are absolutely right. Uh huh. See, man, and that's the thing that just gives you more oomph, you know? Like this, Gia says we're we're together, and then you flip it at the end. She says we are together, and we're together here for you. Because if there's one thing about Eileen Andrews, like you said, she's a field researcher. Yeah, yeah, and like staying with the Iwi, they'd be safe enough. The Iwi know how to avoid the monsters well enough. Which was great. I mean, fucking Mothra was, you know, putting the fucking, uh, uh, the the holographic web back together. Not that it matters anymore because Kong is going to be king. Yes, Kong. That's another thing. I was hoping to God that somebody would have said a cut line where he's finally King Kong. And they still didn't do it in this novelization, ladies and gentlemen. If anybody was going to do it, it would have been Suko because Kong killed the Scar King. Mm-hmm. And that would have made all the sense to me. But that wouldn't have been conveyed in the movie. You know? Another thing about the ending? Gia trying to teach Suko sign language and him starting to get it. So good. So good. So good. So good. Yeah, it was it was it was great. Um, Hampton wake Hampton waking up in the middle of the night and finding the lizard. Uh huh. And saving the lizard. 
yep. and feeling like this is the way the universe is supposed to work. I love that. I fucking love that. And honestly, I, I wish that was a movie. Exactly, and that's why I'm like, all right, maybe they got this actress to play this part. She's probably not going to cost a lot of money. We can do TV with her, and maybe we can flesh that out in TV. We go please, back to 2014. Please, legendary, please. Oh my god, it was so good. It was so good. But all in all, I mean, like again, the novel was great. I dug it. I did not hate it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I have my gripes. Um, yeah. Where it's funny. I will say, I, even though I have my gripes about how the fights are written in it, I would say that overall, I would, I do enjoy Godzilla versus Kong novelizations more than GXKs. But like, like ranking them right now, um, we got. Godzilla 2014 at the bottom because oh. that was the first novelization they, they were green around the gills they didn't know what the lore was from up and down right and there was a lot of grammatical errors in that book um next would be probably Kong Skull Islands it's a it's it's a bit too long that book okay it it it, it drags in places Okay. Um, then we go Godzilla X Kongs, uh, Godzilla Kong: The New Empire. Then we go King of the Monsters, and then we go Godzilla vs Kong. It's my favorite novelization. Godzilla vs Kong. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I because I I I just thought Ren Serizawa was such a wasted character in the movie, and he's an actual character in the book. So yeah. I can't do the book rankings, which is crazy because I just started reading Godzilla 2014. <laughs> like, I literally. Um, and then when I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, I think I definitely read King of the Monsters because I wanted to know more about, like, Kong's perspective. You know? And, um... Mm -hmm. But no, I, like, outside of that, thoroughly enjoyed this book. Um... Gave me exposition the movie didn't give. Some of it I liked. A lot of it ruined it. Still gonna buy the movie on VOD when it comes out. Still gonna buy the hard copy on 4K when it comes out. Because... Oh, same. Same. I can't... I cannot wait for that six discs... Disc... Six disc box set. I was thinking about that. And I was like... As much as that... That is dope. I need to see super extra features for all of these movies. Like, I need to see s something substantial outside of, here's these movies, I own those. Give me something else. That's, that's what, that's what that sixth disc is. That sixth disc is nothing but bonus features. Oh, then I'm buying it. Then I'm buying it. Then I'm buying it. Then I'm buying it. Then it's bought. It's, yeah. it's, it's the MonsterVerse final that, that, box. That is what convinced me yeah that, that that is what convinced me to get that box set instead of just GXK on its own I want that box set for that sixth disc yeah well I'm I'm, I'm the sucker that's gonna buy GXK and the box set cause then I could say well I've got all of them separate and then all of them final box <laughs> but that's fair that's fair but I think that'll do it what do you think I think we ran through it I think we I think we ran through a decent decent enough chunk. We we got through our points and uh, everything else after that is just fluff. Recommended read? Recommended read. Yeah, I, I would definitely recommend it even with uh, some of the lore breaking stuff because I still like the expanded material. I still like the references to the comics. I still I, I still like the introspection of characters that didn't get much fleshing out. Like, Doc Director Hampton is the Ren Sarazawa of that book. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Recommend it, read. Listen, if you love Godzilla and you like these movies, read this book. They give you much more. They give you much more. But if you're like me, 
some of the stuff they give you, you're kind of like, no. But thank God the movies are what counts. That'll do it for this episode of the Gang Gam. Oh, the Gang Gam, you hear me? The G1 and Z1 show. Gang Gam, thank you for joining. Of course, obviously, right? Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. And uh, for anybody who made it this far into the podcast, thanks for listening. Absolutely. I am G1, and we are out of here. A peace.